Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors Podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode, episode 129, and this is part four of um, book recommendations or the books that we like to do with transactional analysis. And other places, and other subjects. Absolutely, absolutely. Not all around transactional analysis. Um, so welcome to The Therapy Show Behind Closed Doors with me, Jackie Jones, and the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook. And Thank this is much. one of your favourite books, I think, Bob. It is, is and, and it's nearly at 130. I When you said 129, I often get staggered when you say this is, a, you know, book, you know, whatever, 164, not there yet, but it's 127 or 67 or whatever it is. Because the last two years or whatever has gone back by so quickly, I think, are we really it? Are we really at podcast 129? Anyway, I just wanted to say that. Well, if you say there's 52 weeks in a year, that's 104 is two years, and we're nearly up to 130. So we're like two and a half years in now, Bob. I, it goes past so quickly. And uh, gosh, where's the time gone? But this book, yes, one of my favorites, The Art and Science of Relationship, The Practice of Integrative Psychotherapy. Yes. So it's by Richard G. Erskine, Richard Erskine, yep. and Janet Morrisund. And Richard Erskine, we all know of, I think. Yep. Um, because he's written so many books now. I think he's this he's written over eleven or twelve books. And he's he's the founder of this type of integrative psychotherapy. Um and and you know, Janet Morrisbund is um I don't know if they're actually still in touch with each other, but they were very uh, uh she came in a lot to his work and they co authored this book. And it, it came out about seven years ago, I think. I mean, this is a second edition. Yeah. So we're going back to about 2015, aren't we, for the first edition. The second edition I I like better, really, because it's had it's got a really good forward and some of the chapters have been extended, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it was written purposefully as a textbook for the American market, the universities and the colleges. So, so it is a textbook. Yeah. It's the complete works of integrative psychotherapy per Richard Erskine's influences. So his take on integrative psychotherapy is quite different of many other versions of integrative psychotherapy. So, for example, if I meet somebody who says they're an integrative psychotherapist, I will always ask, which integrative model are you referring to? Because there's quite a few. Right. This one is really Richard Erskine's take on integrative psychotherapy, which is different from some other people's take on integrative psychotherapy. Yeah. You see, when I first came into this whole business in 1984, stroke 85, um, the sort of major buzzword around psychotherapy or counselling, where I went on a counselling course in 1984, was what was called eclectic counselling or eclectic psychotherapy. And what that meant was that there would be, you know, the model of, if the model of counselling or psychotherapy right back then was coming from eclectic framework, it would be many, diff many different tools you would take. Yeah. And you would use these different many things. different tools. Yeah, it'd be like a jigsaw. Yeah. Nowadays, I think that work has that word has been superseded by integrate integrative. So you can talk to many integrative psychotherapists in the UK, and if I if I said to them, "Well, what what um what what do you mean by integrative psychotherapy?" They would say, "Well, I've just said to you, oh, we take many tools from many different models. Yeah. So we take tools from psychosynthesis, take tools from uh, counselling, take." tools from transaction analysis, take to, take theories from Gestalt, XXXX. Yeah. And then we use them integratively. And that's probably what the answer you might well get back if you asked 
many of the therapists in the United Kingdom what they meant by integrative. Okay. Yes? Yes. Now, Richard Erskine's take takes this a bit further. So he, he primarily he saw integrative psychotherapy, or put it another way around, he saw integration as a cure as, as the curative factor. So in, so in other words, the idea that a therapist would help the client take back the fragmented, cut-off parts of the self and help them integrate those different parts of the cells which they've um, blocked off or denied through trauma, et cetera, into a, into a whole would be how he saw integration. I'm glad you've clarified that, Bob. Because that's what I see as integration, that last part that you've said. I didn't know that integration also covers like taking parts of, of different therapies or whatever. Yeah. I yeah. just yeah. think of it as integrating the self. Yeah. So we're and and he's so it's got two threads. The basic what we've just said there, yeah. and also integrative psychotherapy, which is Erskine style, is also borrowing from self-psychology influenced by transaction analysis, influenced by Gestalt, influenced by some of the great writers. So, for, you know, which would also say, yeah, that's that's a dimension of integrative psychotherapy. And, you know, integration of the self is what we're really talking about when we're talking about this type of integrative psychotherapy. Yeah. So he put together a whole model. Uh, and he's put all the all the um, theories, methods in this book I'm holding up, but I realise people who aren't on YouTube won't see it, but it's a great book. The Art and Science of Relationship, The Practice of Integrative Psychotherapy. So in all these chapters, he talks about the different theories of integrative psychotherapy and the methods of integrative psychotherapy and how you do it. Sounds like a good book. In one book. Yeah. So you, the personality model of integrative psychotherapy, he borrows from transactional analysis. So he borrows parent, adult, child as the major model that underpins the whole um, theme of integration. Yeah. Because what is it, Richard Erskine, that did the four domains of the self? That was yes. The- yeah. It's in this yeah. book. Yeah. Oh, so, right. Yeah. So, yeah. What? You talk Jack is referring to is a, is a model of the personality called four domains of the self, which are you know phys- you know um, emotional, yeah, yeah, behavioural, yeah. thinking, yeah. just logical uh, as a as a model of the self, and is in this book. So that links into what you you were saying earlier about integrating the self, the different parts of ourself, or what? Yeah. I cognitive think part. When people talk about integrative psychotherapy, yeah. yeah, yeah, cognitive part, the emotional part, the behavioural part, and the physiological part. I think you've missed out the spiritual part, but you know that's yeah. another story. Absolutely, um, and that's in this book, as well as the PAC model as well as the central methods of integrative psychotherapy, which he talks about, which is inquiry, attunement, involvement, as well as other theories like script, which again is borrowed from TA, by the way. Um, And then what he calls a keyhole model, which basically comes from all all, all different other parts. Um, But integration is always at the the centre of this therapy. It's a great textbook. That book, when it's talking about um, the the art and science of relationships, is it talking about relationships as in partners, husbands and wife, or is it talking relationships as in, you know, communication yeah. and connecting with anybody and everybody? Second part. Okay, right, yeah. Communication, connection, communication, yeah. relating to others. And if Richard was here, he'd probably say, don't forget, Bob, to say the relationship with the self. The most important relationship yeah, we have. He'd say that. He'd say, Bob, tell them, tell them now, tell them now. What we're really referring to 
It's the relationship with the self. I love that. If that's what he talks about a lot, then I think I'd get on with him because yeah. that is the most yeah. important relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what he says. And, of course, the external world of the self, that's what you just talked about, connection and communication, is external manifestation of internal phenomena. In other words, how we act externally is a manifestation of what's happening on the inside of us. Interesting. Yeah, so in other words, the decisions we have made internally yeah. about ourselves and other people get played out in life, relationships, and connection with other people. So that's the external world. Yeah. So how we externalize, if you want to put it that way, is a manifestation of what we've decided internally. They go together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which again links into the script is though. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So what we've decided on internal level, in, and our survival decisions in respect to trauma, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. is the is the move move moving light or the external manifestation. You know, it's what happens on the inside which guides our external communication. It's not the other way around. Yeah. Yes. Which. Often that's what people believe is it's the people, places and things outside that make us feel the way that we do inside and it's not, it's the opposite. It's completely the yeah. completely opposite. Our external world is guided by the decisions, the traumas of the internal world. Yeah. So, that's so powerful that that reflect- when you realise that. Yeah, ah, oh, that's another story. When we're working clinically, when clients realize that, there's usually big aha moments. Yeah. Because yeah. then then real therapy starts happening, actually. Because then people start real reflecting on the inner world and the choices they've made, and they start taking ownership of responsibility of the self and realize probably for the first time, maybe, that actually they can do something different and take charge of their own destiny rather than putting it on somebody else. Absolutely. that That's made me quite emotional, Bob, you saying that, because that to me is the biggest aha moment that I had mm. when I realised that it was all coming from inside me. I was projecting everything out rather than the outside world out to get me. Mm. Yeah, very moving. I can see you moved and very true. Yeah, absolutely. And- when clients get to that part, real therapy starts to happen. Yeah. But getting to that part, actually, is another story as well. Oh, it's a journey, Bob. <laughs> it's certainly a process, never an event. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. So this book, The Art and Science of Relationship, The Practice of Integrative Psychotherapy by Erskine and Marsund, is a wonderful book. I, I would say he's, the, he's written or co-edited 11 books. I've got them all, by the way, because I've he's been a mad mentor of mine for a very long time. And uh, in fact, I've reviewed a couple of his books. And in fact, I've written some recommend some reviews on these books. But anyway, um, but this book is where all his theories are together in one place. Wow. And that's what I would always recommend to other people because I was thinking about shall I talk about one of his most well-known books which is beyond empathy which is probably the book that sold the most but you know if you were wanted a book where all his theories are in one place and it's very accessible to read you'd buy this book yeah that's another you're costing me a fortune bob because that's another one that i'm putting on my list of books that i need to purchase <laughs> it's it's yeah. it's it is a fantastic book it's a textbook though so you dip in it but yeah. put, as an introduction of integrative psychotherapy and what I'm talking about, but also for further students who want to take this further, yeah. this book, without this book, uh, I won't say you're lost, but this really is the major cornerstone where all these theories are in one place. Yeah. And speaking about books and buying them and everything, I think it's really important to continue learning after you've qualified it's like i oh. 
I'm quite specific over the books that I do like because I know some of them, I'll just put them on my shelf and I'll never read them. So it's really good for me listening to you and the recommendations that you have and the type of books that they are. You're kind of opening the covers for me. But there's there's a couple that you've said that I'm definitely going to go and buy. Oh, good. I was 40 just before I was 39, 40, uh, when I got my cl- clinical accreditation in transaction analysis after sort of uh, five or six years. Maybe I was 40, I'm not quite sure, when I passed my clinical exams. But I didn't meet Richard Erskine till I just got my clinical exams. So I started to get interested in integrative psychotherapy after my first love, which was transaction analysis. So integrative psychotherapy came after, you know, in terms of influenced me personally. Yeah. Yeah. came after my clinical training in transaction analysis. Now, Richard Erskine's first training, by the way, we did train in some Gestalt psychotherapy with Fitzpearl, so he's, how, he's about 81 now. Um, he managed to do some training with Fitzpearl, who so was the originator of Gestalt psychotherapy. But he started thinking about integration in one of his first articles in 1973, but he started to write all these books I'm talking about much later from 1988. And this book's, I think, 2015, but I'd buy this present edition, which is in 2022. It's good to know about, because a lot of the books that I've got on my shelf are books that have been around for an awful long time. (laughs) Yeah. Whereas that one, you know, yes, 2022, that's like just a couple of years ago, but it was written in 2015, which is quite recent. So mm. for people that are coming through their training now, I would imagine that's quite good to go for a recent book. Yes, we know or we need to know all the background and, you know, I'm okay, you're okay and all the older stuff. But it's good to know that books are still being written now that's for right. transactional analysis. That's right. So if you're interested in psychology, it's an interesting book. If you just started integrative training, albeit another version of integrative psychotherapy or not. It's an interesting book. If you're a student of Richard Erskine's ideas on integrative psychotherapy, it's a vital book. So uh, it's certainly a modern book. Yeah. Written by a past master, by the way. He's he's 82 now. So he goes right back to training, I think, for about a year with Fritz Pearls. He always told me he missed meeting Eric Byrne by like five minutes or something or other. If he was here, he'd probably have another story about it. But he does talk about he missed uh, he missed actually meeting Eric Byrne. But um, Eric Byrne's had a big influence on Richard Erskine because he's borrowed the parent adult child as the major model. Even though you're right, he's got other models as well. Yeah, yeah. Integration is the curative factor. That's where he. That's where we're heading with this model. Yeah. See, I'm fascinated when I hear you talking. One, the fact that you've met these people, I think he's brilliant. But also, you know, the the daddies of psychotherapy today and, and you know, there's a lot of them that are still alive. Mm. You know, mm. the, the... Well, Richard Erskine's life. I, I tell you who else Richard Erskine was really influenced by, Carl Rogers. Yeah. Carl Rogers colleague and i can't remember his name but a really well-known person was richard erskine's supervisor for a while for a while and richard oh, erskine was really... person-centered into did he do person yeah yeah like yeah that? so richard erskine yeah. was yeah. very influenced and you can see that in his major methods of an integrative psychotherapy uh has a have a very client-centered feel to it yeah it might be good if we did a podcast on all these people and just, you know, what what the ideas were and, and kind of bringing them all together somehow. Yeah, we could call it the history and influences of a modern psychotherapy or something. Yeah. Because... Or the history of psychotherapy. So what, what would you say there's, what, 10, 15, 20 major players in this? Oh, much more. I mean, if you go back to Freud, you have to go back to Freud. We, I'm not going to go back to religious healing, which was before Freud. I think I'd go back to Freud, who's probably the origi- originator uh, in the sense of what we're talking about here. 
And that, of course, was psychoanalysis because he was the father of psychoanalysis. Uh, in his books, really, Hysteria and various other books, we could go back to 1888 when Hysteria was actually published. I would say psychoanalysis. And the people that surrounded him, young, even though Freud and Jung split up and they sort of fell out. There was Forensi, which is another psych. You've got a psychoanalytical sort of school yeah. from about 1888 onwards. Um, Jung came along a bit later and various proportions. And then what happened was the psychotherapy came out of the psychoanalytical tradition, probably in the 1930s, 40s, with people like Harry H. Sullivan, uh, Paul Fadern, Fairbrother, and various other people. And then. I've never heard of them ones, Bob. No, but that I better stop this because it'll go on forever. Yeah, but so it's, definitely, it's, it's definitely a, a good title for a podcast The History of, you know, Psychotherapy, where it all comes Yeah, because from. if you look at people like Fritz Perls, the originator of Gestalt Psychotherapy, if you look at people like Eric Byrne, the originator of Transaction Arses, if you look at people like Carl Rogers, the, uh, you know, the archetype of client centered psychotherapy, and then ask yourself, who were those? people's therapists and early influencers yeah. go back to psychoanalysis. Yeah. Do you know what amazes me, Bob, when I hear people like you talking about things like this, that the, the, the textbooks and the, the, you know, the books that we all refer back to, you, you could write a book now that would be on everybody's bookshelves. Well, I probably could in terms of this, yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? And it, it's like the, the history of it all, and that it's it wasn't it was created by a person just like you or me, and that yeah. we're all using that in our training now. It fascinates me how it all evolves. Yeah. I might even call it the the Marino effect, because you could say that most psychotherapies today in the humanistic tradition go back to Marino, who was the originator of play therapy. Yeah, the early. But then you'd have to go back again to the uh, to Freud, probably. So I think supposedly everything goes back to Freud. But Marino, of course, was probably responsible for the creation of what we call two chair work today. Then Fritz Perls pinched his uh, pinched his actionistic techniques, and then to Eric Byrne took Fritz Perls ideas. We could go on and on. It'd be interesting to do like a family tree of it all and where it all comes from and how it all filters down to to what we've got today. But yes, I, the other thing I mentioned, you know, in the training that I did over the weekend was how many different sorts of psychotherapy and counselling that there are. And there's there's so many of them now. Hundreds. <laughs> hundreds, uh, hundreds, uh, hundreds. Yeah. 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 And what's his name? For, forgotten his name, quite well known. Bryden or Bryden, oh, it doesn't really matter. It's a well-known. He came up with 566, but that book was about, um, you know, uh, seven or eight years ago. But if you're going to talk, you're going to guess easily into 500, 600 different types of therapeutic books, counting all the Reiki book and the spiritual psychotherapy books, and we could go on and on, but we're easily going to go well into the hundreds. But this episode started off looking at the art and science of relationships. Yeah, yeah. Great book, seriously. Get back to that book. If you're interested in, interested in integration, any form or sense, buy that book. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to look it up as soon as we come off, Bob. So thank you so much. Um, do you want to do more on, on books? or? Let's do go back to some other topics and then come back later to some see more. See if any, anybody says that they want us to do a review on it. Yeah, so let's see that first talking about next time is how to present ourselves in the therapy room and does it really matter now that <laughs> says, as she sat the i know i chose this title <laughs> <laughs> you know i really like that one by the way i i love it because i i yes i don't think i'm what people typically think of as a psychotherapist i certainly don't no, that that's, now that would be interesting uh, podcast because according to your script and according to your history culture and everything that goes from that you'll have your own projections on what is a sort of psychotherapist or a correct psychotherapist yeah absolutely yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to that one bob so until next time see you see you then see you soon bye bye, bye.
You've been listening to The Therapy Show Behind Closed Doors Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.